Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing processor news galore. We'll start things out with AMD's Threadripper, and while there are four dies which comprise this absolutely behemoth package, and then we're going to move over to Intel, because their Coffee Lake series of processors are incompatible with 200 series motherboards or below. So news, of course, of a successful delidding of AMD's Threadripper quickly spread across the internet from Debauer. I say successful in a very loose term, because after this was finished, the processor was no longer usable. But there were four dies which made up this absolutely massive package, as I said to begin with. However, only two of these were active, which means that you have just um, a total of 16 cores, 32 threads com compared to the absolute maximum which would be 32 uh, cores and 64 threads. We've since learned that what has happened is that AMD have decided to use two um, dies which are essentially spacers. The two active cores are basically opposed to each other diagonally. So there are a number of questions. Why did AMD decide to do this? And what does this mean going forward? Well, the reason for the die arrangement makes an awful lot of sense. Basically having these two dies opposed to each other and then having the two spaces opposite allows the two dies to A, have reduced hotspots, and B, it means you have increased structural integrity given the size of the coolers themselves. The other thing is that Threadripper and Epic, which of course is a server oriented version of the processor, are very similar in infrastructure. Therefore, it makes a lot of sense in terms of the actual construction of these processors. In other words, you know, the same CCX configurations and so on. It makes an awful lot of sense for them to share this because it basically reduces manufacturing cost. So just to be clear, the spaces themselves apparently are not bad cores. They're not cores which are non-functional. Instead, they basically have no actual transistors at all and are basically dummies. This does, of course, lead to the next inevitable question, which I'm sure I'm going to uh, get if I don't ask it here. Does that mean that AMD could crank up the core count in the future? Well, the company are being pretty quiet on that front, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. As I just said, and as many of you know, Epic and Threadripper are very similar to one another architecturally. It isn't out of the question, but obviously no one's talking, including AIBs, in other words, the MSIs, the ASUSs, and whomever, on whether it's actually possible for the motherboards to support an increased core count processor, whether the actual wiring is there or not. Hell, to be honest, because the X399 boards are out, for all we know, it's possible to actually manually modify the BIOS, or perhaps someone would actually have some kind of um, adapter which will actually allow Epics to plug into X399 boards or vice versa. Obviously, that's purely speculation on my part, but this is just the position we're at right now. There are an awful lot of questions when it comes to X399. So it's just a bit weird if you kind of have a broad overview, but once you start delving down into it, it makes an awful lot of sense because it gives AMD an awful lot of future upgrade options. It, they could, for example, once again, go to a 24 core processor, a 32 core processor, not a problem, in theory, as long as the platform itself supports it. And on top of that, it reduces manufacturing cost. And also, once again, it means that the processors themselves should have reduced hotspots and all of that stuff. So it's pretty cool. And it does, once again, in theory, mean that the package could support uh, four of these rather large CCXs. Anyway, in a somewhat I'm going to go uh, go ahead and say baffling piece of news, actually. And that is that Intel's Coffee Lake will not support 200 series motherboards or below. So this is kind of weird because originally the LGA 1151 socket appeared with Skylake. Now, of course, the crowning jewel of that was the i7-6700K. And then we saw the uh, KB Lake was back with the compatible. So, for example, if you bought a 7700K uh, because you were upgrading from, say, a 6600K, then you could, providing your motherboard supported it and you did a BIOS update first, you could put that processor in your board and boom. But, according to various leaks, there was some questions as to whether Coffee Lake would either physically or artificially be limited on previous motherboards. Now, Intel weren't saying anything. However, 
Azrock on Twitter decided to break the silence, the radio silence. Uh, a chap actually asked him, and I uh, sorry asked Azrock, and I quote: "Will the Z270 supercarrier get support for the upcoming Intel Coffee Lake CPUs?" Azrock responded: "No, Coffee Lake." CPUs are not compatible with 200 series motherboards. Obviously, he didn't say 100 series motherboards, but let's just be really, really honest. It's incredibly unlikely that's the case. So that's just, that's not good news, actually. And as you can imagine, a lot of people are pissed off about this. Now, to give Intel the benefit of doubt just for a second, I don't know if it's because they're increasing the core count up to six or whether it's something else entirely that this does not work backwardly, uh, so th this is the reason it's not backwardly compatible. Obviously, because of that radio silence, it's just like, mm, we don't know. Also, ASRock apparently are obviously only referring to their boards, so whether it's going to be the case for other motherboard manufacturers is very likely, so I highly doubt if you've got an Asus board, you're going to be able to plonk in an 8700K, for sake of argument, but I guess it is always possible for, so do wait for further confirmation. But this is not exactly a long-lasting platform. Um, in fact, the launch date, of course, was Q1. And given we're probably going to be seeing Coffee Lake in the next couple of months or so, you're looking at potentially, and obviously it does depend, but it could be around eight, nine months. That's not even a year for this whole platform to survive. And that's not very long at all. So I do feel people are going to be somewhat pissed off with that. And given how AMD are really really, really making a big point of AM4 and the compatibility across APUs and CPUs and the fact that supposedly, honestly, I'm going to wait and see and whether it's really the case or not, the backward compatible with, um, sorry, it's going to be forward compatible with Zen 2s as well. Of course, there are some questions with that, like let's say for the sake of argument, Zen 2 happens to come out by the time PCIe 4 is released and all of these other technologies. Yeah, sure, technically you could buy a Zen 2 uh, processor for your motherboard, but realistically, how many people actually want to do that? Well, that, of course, remains to be seen. So, this is definitely very disappointing news, but, well, I'm kind of not surprised. It was always not exactly confirmed that it was going to be backwards compatible. I hoped it would be, but I didn't expect it to be. So, I guess this is just confirmation. So, if you have just bought a 200 series board recently, and you were kind of thinking, oh, okay, well, I can jump to coffee. They bad news for you. And of course, there's not much you can do. The best, the best advice is obviously just to try and sell it. Um, but what the resale value of that is going to be when you know these processes come out, I just don't know. So it kind of sucks. But with all of that said, it's most likely not Asrock's fault. Whether it's Intel's fault, in other words, this, once again, just to repeat myself, whether this is an artificial limitation. In other words, they're just saying, nope, we're not going to support it because we want to, you know, sell more motherboards, we want more licensing fees and all, all the other bits and bobs, you, you know, you can imagine. Or whether it really is something that's hardwired into the board, whether, you know, these new processors uh, have just different requirements, whether it's something, you know, inherent that is something to do with the actual BIOS or whether it's actual physical or whatever, we just don't know. And I'm very curious to see if someone, whether it's Intel or a partner, is going to decide to break radio silence on this. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, or not, perhaps, if you've got a 200 series board. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.